I think mid next year. I think it's somewhere. If ETH we've just discussed is so important to the current environment of of where we are, arguably it's more important than Bitcoin um, because of how much is being built on it and is driving prices because of NFTs and DeFi and all these things moving the price of ETH. Then the ETH 2.0 staking, whenever that happens, and you know, not the staking, the 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 release of ETH 2.0. <clears throat> I think around that is the is the moment because you kind of know i know people have i've been arguing a bit on twitter about this i've always said that the moment it's released is probably a buy the rumor sell the fact mm. and everyone's like yeah but my eth's already going to be locked for a longer period but i can front run you because i know you have to sell your eth you might sell your eth as soon as you're unlocked so why would i why would i give you the benefit of higher prices to sell into you know markets no positions so there's nothing worse than e2.0 out you're still locked and I get to sell because I didn't stake and you're trapped watching the prices fall. Markets love pain. The little guys have front run the institutions. I mean, I've launched this exponential age asset management, which is a fund of hedge funds that invests in crypto hedge funds. There's a lot of people like, why didn't you let the little guys in? I'm like, A, I can't legally because of the law and I understand that it's unfair. And yes, I'm doing some other projects that will help that. But don't you understand me bringing in New money into the hedge fund space in crypto drives up the value of your token and you are front running them just as I promised you would. Right now, it's highly observable that the Ethereum network is growing faster than the Bitcoin network and Solana and Terra and Avalanche are growing faster than Ethereum, but from a lower base. Mm. That's fine. So they're all growing and you know, the Bitcoin network is growing. So every one of those is growing. And so at this stage, it doesn't matter. This is what makes Metcalf's law interesting because you can have a chain like Doge, which has a lot of investors, yeah. but not enough use cases. I think it may come because it's such a big chain with so many people on it that why would you not build applications for it? But it's a very lopsided Metcalf's law. So it should be very volatile in price because once the investors leave, there's no stuff. Ethereum is so deep and so rich an ecosystem with the number of people building on it that it's incredibly powerful. And everybody has to realize is whatever people think the narrative is in Bitcoin about Bitcoin being money, the reality is the medium of exchange in Web 3.0 is ETH. I mean, all NFTs are priced in ETH. Sotheby's are doing art auctions in ETH. DeFi is based in ETH generally. I The metaverse is in ETH. I even commissioned the headquarters for Real Vision in Crypto Voxels. We got a metaverse architects firm to build it. They charge us an ETH. So ETH is money right now. Does it always remain money? Who knows? But right now, nobody, nobody pays each other in Web 3.0 and Bitcoin. Literally nobody. Crypto has been the best single way to teach myself how to do it because I've got a big picture framework. I've got a long-term risk reward. And I've learned to look at, I mean, I've got a tick, not, I've got an hourly chart of Ethereum next to me. And I watch it and I think, oh my God, it's going to roll over. It's going to do, but I don't, I disassociate that from my PL. I don't even look at my PL. I look at it occasionally when the market's at all time highs, but I just ignore it because looking at the PL makes you think, oh my God, I've made and lost this much money today. And that becomes an emotional state of fear or euphoria. But if you're just looking at dispassionate price action, it's different. I haven't always done that. Um, and it's different with crypto because I don't use leverage. So I don't have to obsess over the price. But in macro, you tend to use a lot of leverage otherwise. And then you have to obsess over the price because you're going to get into deep trouble if it goes against you. So again, crypto has really taught me the joys of long-term investing, which I've always been a long-term investor, without leverage in something volatile enough that gives you high returns. And it's amazing. Um, so my price prediction is, I still think it gets to about somewhere between two and 300,000. But it, it has traded terribly. Hmm. It has traded terribly since March. We broke new highs, still can't really break higher. We don't get a retail acceleration point. It doesn't trade very well. That's the weird thing about it. Now, that could resolve itself with an explosive upside move, which is what I think is going to resolve it. But it, it really has not traded well this year. It's basically gone nowhere. All year since since the beginning, you know, since March. Warren well, look, I mean, I'm looking at my screen as of today. Bitcoin is up 95% this year. Ethereum's up 517% this year. 
and XRP that's on my screen is up 335% this year. So Bitcoin's been the worst asset to own of the majors. Um, you mentioned, you know, we could see some explosive growth. Um, what do you think might be the catalyst for that? Is it more inf inflation concerns? Could it be adoption by other small? No, this whole space is driven by adoption and new entrants. The number of active wallet addresses has remained below peak and when price got to peak. So what we're not seeing and the number of new wallets is still the seven, seven day rate of change is still relatively low. So what we haven't seen is headlines of Bitcoin goes to new highs up 50% in a month that drives in retail and panics in institutions. So we've been missing that. And I think it comes. Institutions are allocating, but we're now, you know, in the last two months of the year, in the last month of the year, if they're making their asset allocation decisions, they'll either put it at the end of this quarter or beginning of next quarter as they start fully allocating into, into this. So I know the institutions are all coming. They're all involved, but I think a lot of them are like 2022. Yeah, we're going to allocate to Bitcoin. Yeah, I mean, I think it goes over 20,000 and I have done for a long time. And there's a potential for even further uh, because of the staking dynamics and stuff. But my general view is that it goes to 20,000. And I say that with a relative level of confidence. That's just a repeat of what Bitcoin did in 2017. It kind of overlays pretty well. It's not perfect. It was perfect for a while. The charts were like spooky tick for tick. Now they're not, but contextually kind of makes sense for me. It's only a 4X from here. I mean, we've seen Bitcoin do 4X in, uh, or ETH last cycle did, you know, 4X, 5X, 6X in the last month of the year. So who knows? I think the cycle extends anyway. I think it's not going to be the same Bitcoin halving cycle that we've seen. I think it's changed because of the nature of people who are in the market now as well, with the institutions coming in and others. So yeah, I think it goes further and higher than most people imagine. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where do you start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them. And if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange. And one of the biggest are, for example, Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well-established exchanges. But, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.